Hey everybody, Mountain Man here with the second part of episode 3 of Hunter 101. Um, we are going over the skill and perk point system in this episode. Uh, first part, we went over the stalker tree and the basics of how the skill and perk point system works, how you get the points, where you put them, how to reset them, etc, etc. We're not going to go over the basics with this part simply because it takes up a lot of time. And if you want to watch that, go watch uh, part number one. If you have not yet seen it, Check that out. That's going to go over the stalker tree. Again, it's going to go over the basics of uh, how and when you get your skill and perk points, where you put them, um, how to reset them, how active and passive skills work, etc. I'm going to put a link down in the description for you if you want to go check that out. Uh, so otherwise, we're just going to dive straight into this one. Uh, we're going to go over the ambusher tree this time. Um, so if you hit F3, that'll bring up your skill trees. Um, just like with the stalker tree, we're going to go through each tier. And as we go through each tier, we're going to go through each skill and we're going to go over what the levels do and what my feelings are on it. As I said in the previous video, Ambusher Tree really doesn't start to become particularly useful until you hit about level 10 to 15. Um, just simply because you're not going to be unlocking any of the scents until later on. So the very first um, skill, Tier 0, Scent Tinkerer. Uh, not satisfied with the performance of the scent lures in the store? Become a true scent alchemist. Well, if you don't have any scents unlocked yet, putting points on this gets you zero. So you're just kind of banking points until later on. Um, but we're going to go through it anyway. Uh, definitely put your points in the soccer, and then later on you can start filtering them into Ambusher if you want. Uh, level 1 increases the number of uses per canister for all scent lures purchased. You just get more bang for your buck out of it. Uh, level 2 increases the duration of all scent lures. Um, again, more bang for your buck out of it. If they last longer, you get more uses, then, you know, obviously you're saving money over the long run. Uh, level three increases the range of all scent lures, so the scent will travel further. Uh, level four increases the attraction chance of all scent lures. So I would say two points into this is fine. Um, <clears throat> I haven't found that I've got any trouble with the range. Uh, I don't know exactly how much of an increase to range it does, because it doesn't tell you. Uh, and that's a real hard thing to test. We've tried testing it, and there's no real easy way for me to set it up, you know, without being able to spawn an animal in at a specific distance on a flat plane with wind blowing, etc. There's no real easy way to test it. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know if it's a dramatic increase, if it's just a slight increase, whatever. Um... And then the attraction chance, I mean, honestly, I've never had any problems with scent lures not attracting animals. So I feel like two points in this is probably fine. Um, again, you, if you want, if you get extra points and you want to dump all four in there, you can knock yourself out. I mean, that just means that you'll unlock tier two a little bit quicker. But uh, two points in this should be sufficient. Uh, moving on to tier one, spotting knowledge. Uh, increases the amount of information that can be gained from the last animal spotted. Level 1 reveals the information about the approximate health of the animal. Um, so that's kind of nice. So if you shoot something and you lose it, and it kind of mingles back in with the herd, if you're spotting animals, this is kind of nice to pick out the one that you shot that you may have just gotten a flesh wound on. They don't always show signs of being wounded. So if it's from like 75 to 100% health, only because you, you know, hit it in the tail, um, then it's not going to really show any outward signs that it's wounded. So, um, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to tell the approximate health of the animals. Not super useful, but useful enough. Uh, level 2 reveals information about the approximate trophy rating and weight of the animal. So that's really handy. Um, if you are a spot and stock kind of hunter, uh, where you're going to get up high, you're going to glass down on the open areas, find a herd, and pick an animal that you're going to then stock and hunt, that works really well with level 2, because level 2 is going to tell you what the approximate trophy rating and weight of it is, which is in turn going to affect your score. So um, definitely worth getting that. Level 3 reveals information about how aware the animal is of nearby threats. Tried this out, didn't really have much use for it. Um, I would imagine this is really going to shine when you start getting into level like 6, 7, 8 animals, once you're getting up into the legendaries and mythicals and everything. Um, because they are hyper-vigilant of their surroundings um, in terms of sight, 
smell and sound. So knowing how aware they are of those is pretty handy. Um, but if you're not going after those high level animals, probably not worth the third point to go into that. Um, Dazed and confused adds a random chance of attracting an animal that is not usually attracted by a particular scent. This is one of those skills, and this tree is kind of rife with them, that I feel is not worth it, and I think is kind of... I question why they put it in the game. Um, why would you want to attract an animal that's not usually attracted by a particular scent if you're using that particular scent to draw in a particular animal? Um, I mean, if you're trying to attack, attract deer and you're bringing a moose... I mean, yeah, I guess you might potentially bring in a, a good moose, but for the most part, I don't want to bring in a moose when I'm hunting deer. I'm hunting deer. That's what I'm after. Uh, similarly, I wouldn't want to bring in a bear because he might attack you. So it's one of those ones that I, I kind of question why it's in there. I don't know if it's maybe just filler so the tree actually has a bunch of skills in it or not, but... I don't find much use for it. I don't really recommend putting a point into it. Uh, I feel it's a wasted point. But again, everything I say here, take with a grain of salt. Nothing's concrete. Nothing is an absolute must-have. Um, you can make everything work without using any of these. So that's just my opinion on it. Now, the more the merrier. Increases the monetary reward gained from completing any mission by 5%. Missions reward a pretty decent chunk of, chat, of cash. So... Increasing that by 5% doesn't sound like much, but it will add up over time. If you're somebody that likes to do all the missions, I'm not. I honestly don't like doing the missions. I find that the whole system for doing them and for um, indicating that you have actually met the requirements for the mission um, is just clunky and doesn't work very well. Um, it's a hunting simulator. It's not a mission simulator. Uh, I know a lot of people that like doing the missions, though. And they are a good source of experience and cash when you're at a lower level. So um, this would definitely be worth putting a point into um, just to get that extra money. So if you're going to go down that path where you're going to put a point into this to get the extra cash out of your missions, maybe hold off doing your missions until you reach a high enough level that you're able to actually um, get in here and get use out of the rest of the tree at the same time. Um, otherwise, if you rush to get it, um, you're going to gimp yourself, you know, by putting, not being able to put points in the stalker tree and you're going to have points in here that you can't use it. Yeah. Um, so this is definitely worth a point if you want to make some extra money and you do the missions. Um, I don't do the missions, so I don't have a point in it. It's that simple. Tier two, sight spotting. Uh, unlocks the ability to spot animals while in aim mode with weapons. This means that you do not have to switch to binoculars or a range finder device to spot an animal. It's really, really handy. So if you uh, are glassing over a group of animals or herd of animals with your gun, you can spot the animals through your gun rather than have to use binoculars or a rangefinder. Uh, that's actually pretty handy if you ask me. Uh, it, it just saves you time. So um, it's definitely worth putting a point into this just to save yourself time. That doesn't mean you don't have to use a rangefinder. Um, over long distances if you want, or if you're just kind of looking, just because the rangefinder um, is steady. There's no sway to it, so it's, you know, it's a little bit easier to use. Uh, this could also work really well with a perk. And let me see where... Yes, okay. So in the handgun tree, there's an active skill called Ranger. Um uh, and that gives you the ability to gauge approximate distance to a target while aiming with any weapon. So if you're able to spot an animal, you can then use it in con uh, conjunction with Ranger to tell what the distance is to the animal. It's just it's a, a handy little combo there that you could use. Um, fatal Attraction. Anyone can use a collar, but it takes a true artist to do it well. Level 1 is an increased chance of attracting animals to your location when using collars. Level 2 is an increased chance of eliciting a vocalization response from nearby animals when using collars. The only animals that I find that this is really going to benefit from having this skill are coyotes, bears, and foxes. For the simple fact that those are the only three in the game that if you spam a collar, they're not going to come in. Foxes especially. Foxes, if you spam the collar more than twice, um, they're just going to run away because they know something's up. They, they coded the, those animals differently so that they're a little smarter when it comes to calls. If you are unable to spam your callers for um, all the prey animals, deer, 
and moose and elk and all of that that would be way more useful but as it is you can just spam your collar over and over and over again until they notice it and then bring them in and kill them so i don't find that this really um is very useful level two gives you an increased chance of getting a vocal response from them but chances are pretty good if you're calling you already know where the animal is in the first place um you know, if you're sitting in a blind, just listen. You can hear the things coming from a mile away as they tromp through the brush. This is another one of those skills that I just kind of question why it's here. Um, and there's going to be another one in the next tier, which is along the same veins. That I just, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's just filler. I feel like something better could be there. I don't know what that something is. Um, if you guys have suggestions, mention them in the comments because I'd love to hear them. But I feel like that could be replaced by something more useful. Impact resistant. Is it a plane? Is it a bird? No, it's a falling hunter. Reduces the damage taken from falling. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I am an idiot, and I tend to fall off of the watchtowers and die. I don't know if using this will prevent you from dying, because I have not activated it, or put a point into it, and then purposely jumped off a watchtower. That's the only time I've ever gotten fall damage, if I'm honest, um, is falling off of a watchtower. So... Um, I, I wouldn't say put a point into it, but that's just me. And we're back. Sorry about that. Somebody knocked on my door looking for the neighbor. Uh, anyway, so here we are. Uh, impact resistant. Yeah, I don't really feel that it's worth putting the point into impact resistant because even jumping down off of the mountains, I don't think I've ever really taken fall damage from that. You just kind of hit an incline and slide down. So not really worth putting a point into it. Um. And in its current iteration, at least. Tier 3, Tag. Level 1 increases the duration of the traced outline on an animal after spotting it. And level 2 increases the ability to add a spotting outline on up to three animals simultaneously. That's a pretty handy skill to have. Um, I mean, the, the traced outline on an animal after you spot it sticks around for a good amount of time. Uh, but this is going to increase it by a pretty decent margin. So... You're going to spot it, and that gives it more time for that animal to come out from undercover or for you to keep track of where it is while you look at other animals, etc. Level 2 unlocks the ability to add a spotting outline on up to three animals simultaneously. Not as useful, because um, typically when you're spotting, you're spotting one particular animal, and that's the one you're going to kill. So I don't get a lot of use out of that, but uh, it could be handy if there's multiple trophy targets in a herd. Um, that's not unheard of, to have multiple males in a herd. Uh, so unheard of I gonna I need to stop making these bad jokes in these videos man you guys are gonna unsubscribe anyway um, so definitely one point into it's really handy two points yeah use your judgment um, you may find that you, you use it more than I do who's deer level one adds a random chance of attracting a species that is not usually attracted by a particular caller Level 2 adds a random chance of inducing a vocalization response from a species that is not usually affected by a particular caller. I bet you guys know already what I'm going to say about this one, and that it's trash. I don't think that this is useful at all. Again, it comes down to the same thing with sense. If you are calling in an animal, with a specific animal, with a specific caller, why would you want another one to come in? If I'm calling in deer, I want deer. I don't want, you know, a coyote or whatever. Um... I don't, I don't find that it's useful. I find that, again, it's just sort of a filler skill that doesn't really add a lot to the game. Um, so I don't use it. I don't recommend you use it. You can use it if you'd like, but it is two points that you could probably better spend elsewhere. Peck Mule. Clever insights into space management has allowed you to carry more gear. Increases the base carry capacity by 15%. Really handy skill to have. Um, simply because when you're loading yourself up with stuff... That 20 units of weight max that you have available to you gets filled up real quick. Especially if you're bringing along a tent, that's six units. If you're bringing along a blind, that's another six units. Most of the rifles are two or three units apiece. You don't have to carry ammo or scopes in your bag, but uh, if you're carrying scents, that's half a unit apiece, so that adds up if you've got a lot of them. If you're carrying collars, that's a half a unit apiece, that adds up. So increasing your base car carry capacity by 15%, that's a pretty decent use of one point, if you ask me. Um, so if you're going deep in the ambusher tree, I mean, that's that's really handy. Uh, that being said, I feel like this would be better served lower in the tree, because in order to get to it, you got to go through all of this crap here. 
which means that you're not putting points in the stalker, which is a far more useful tree in my opinion. So I feel like maybe this should go back, maybe replace Dazed and Confused or something in order to be more useful and more accessible to lower level people. All right, so tier four, the only, first and only active skill in the airbrush tree, Keen Eye. Unlocks the ability to scout the surrounding area for animals and signs of activity near a lookout point. You must be within 10 meters of a lookout point to activate the skill. The action can be repeated, but comes with a cooldown time. Level 1 adds a chance of revealing need zones on the map near the lookout point when surveying from it. Level 2 adds a chance of revealing animal groups on the map near the lookout point when surveying from it. So, if you're near a lookout group, a uh, lookout tower, sorry, um, you can activate this skill. And if you've got two points in it, it has a chance of revealing a need zone on the map near the lookout point. So sleeping, drinking, eating, um, and a chance of revealing animal groups. So I don't know what they consider an animal group. I don't know if they consider two animals a group or if it has to be three, four, five, etc. Um, it could, this could be a useful skill. The need zones are handy. Um, <clears throat> Animal groups, I don't usually find a lot of animal groups around the lookout towers, but, um, and the other thing they don't note is what the range is on it. Like, what range around the tower does it reveal need zones and animal groups? And it doesn't say, it just says near the lookout point, which is a very vague way of saying it. Um, it I need to do a little bit more testing before I can come to a conclusion on whether this is worth it or not. But as it stands right now, I, I'm questioning it. Hill Caller increases the attraction range of all callers when used within 10 meters of a lookout point. Well, that sounds nice, but it doesn't say how much it increases the range. Um, lookout points aren't necessarily known to be hotbeds of animal activity, so I don't know why specifically lookout points um, are used for this. You would think that being on top of hills and other elevated points would give you increased range. Um, it's just the simple fact that they don't tell you what the increased range is, and it's impossible to test. Uh, and you have to be near a lookout point. I find that this is too specific to really be worth putting a point into. So I wouldn't really put a point in it. Haggle, you're a likable person. I like you. You're a good guy. I don't care what anybody else says about you. Reduces the cost of all items in the outpost store by 5%, which is not a lot, honestly. For a tier 4 skill, it should be more than 5%. I'm not saying, you know, 50%, but 10-15% would probably be more worth putting the point into and going this deep into the tree for it. Um, yeah, save you money over time, you know, buying ammunition and new sites and things like that. Yeah, it could save you a bunch of money, but... If it's going to be 5%, it should probably be lower in the tree. Because um, I feel that in Tier 4, by the time you have enough points to get to Tier 4, you've already bought everything out of the storage you're going to buy anyway, so it's sort of a wasted point. If it were lower in the tier, I'd rate it higher, but as it is, Tier 4 in, in the Ambusher tree is pretty terrible, if you ask me. Most of the Ambusher tree is really terrible. The whole tree, in my opinion, needs a reworking, because um, the scent lures and callers need to have their level requirements dropped. Their prices are dropped, but the level requirements weren't. Uh, the deer grunt caller, for example, I think is a level 39 requirement. Why? We have the deer bleat caller that gives, that's given to you for free at level 1. Why do we need to wait till level 39 to get a caller that has less of an attraction rate but a higher range? I don't understand the, the thought process behind it. Uh, I, I understand like they may be gating you in terms of what level you would be likely to be entering areas that will have, say, moose, for example. But you're going to get into the areas with moose way before you've reached the level for the caller. I know, because I did it myself. Um, you know, there's no locks to progression to other areas of the map to hunt these, quote-unquote, higher-level animals, other than not having the guns to kill them. But it, even that being said, you can kill a moose with a 243 all day, every day, drop it with one bullet, and that's not a problem. So I don't understand the ambusher tree. I feel like it needs to be reworked a lot. Things need to be moved around. Things need to be removed completely um, in order for it to be worth putting points into. So as I said in the last video, go with Stalker. 
you really can't beat almost any of the um, skills in this this tree. I mean, obviously, there's ones that don't really work that well. Like I said, Harden's not really something I would put a point into. Weather prediction, I wouldn't put two points into if you held a gun to my head. Um, disturbed vegetation is dubious on how useful it'll be. Um, so I don't really recommend putting your points in ambusher at all. Um, I, this is not worth it to me, um, especially not in lower levels. Um, other than, you know, the four points I put into it right now, I might put a third point into this, um, into tier, uh, spotting knowledge in tier one. I might get into site spotting and tag. I don't really find I have a lot of use for them. Um, I'd love to put a point in the pack mule, but it's so far up, it's just, you know, it's not really you know, worth going through everything else to get to just that. But anyway, so that's been the ambusher tree um, for part two. Part three, we're going to go over the perk trees. I think I can fit everything in one video for that, just simply because um, there's only six per tree. So it'll be a lot quicker to go through everything and explain everything than it was to do the um, skill trees. So uh, we'll have to play that by ear, but I think that's what we're going to do. If you guys liked the video, like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't like the video, again, downvote the video, comment below. Let me know what you didn't like, what I can improve. Um, again, I like all feedback because it lets me know what I'm doing right lets me know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, so look out for the next video, part three, coming out fairly soon, as soon as I get done recording it and editing it and bringing it up, etc., etc. Um, and hey, if you guys haven't seen my ATV showcase video, check it out. Uh, it'll be at the end of this video after I stop talking and, and going on and on and on about dumb stuff. Uh, and thanks, everybody. That's it. That's all for today. Take care, and we'll see you next time.